Hey, all right, Shalom, I'm going to give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Mokar Kodash. It's a double honor to the apostles and the bishop elders at Great Millstone for teaching us his word in truth and sincerity and for reading well. And salutations to my fellow Akim across the four corners of the globe, preaching and prophesying in the name of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. It is a brother, Gabor Yahweh, from GMS Hawaii, coming to you with another quick lesson. And the title of this lesson is a working title, is entitled Esau Has Commodified things that are a necessity for life. Roughly, roughly, it was a rough title, but I'll try to figure something out as I go along through the spirit. And this was inspired by a conversation I was having with one of the elder brothers from um, West Palm Beach, Florida. We were talking about, you know, how Esau has basically commodified life, things that are supposed to be free for the abundance and for the care of of life daily, such as water, land, you know, oil, these things that are a necessity to life. There's things in life that you need to live. And Esau has taken everything in his power and he's making you pay for it, pay for it. Chiefly the children of Israel, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, as well as other nations, including his own. That's why the scripture says, he that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good to? You know, and, and us having to go to Esau for the want and need of everything, and not only us, but even other nations got to do the same thing, you know, has basically made us slaves unto Esau and made the world in slavery. That's why the scripture says this in um, the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. Okay, the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24, right, says, says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked he covered the faces of the judges thereof if not where and who is he right so he's been given managerial power over the earth all right and and he covered the faces of the judges all right it says right here it says the whole earth in the nlt the whole earth is in the hands of the wicked and this is another reason why the lord is going to destroy those that destroyed the earth it's not talking about somebody who threw a piece of paper on the ground. No, you Edomites, you destroyed the earth by by your your presence, the things that you've done. You destroyed the earth, and your Hawashi is coming back to destroy you. First, your kingdom. This is the whole earth is in the hands of the wicked, and God blinds the eyes of the judges. If he is not the one who does it, who is? That's right, man. That's right. And the weirder judges of the earth, starting with Yahweh, Hawashi, and Hawashi. And Esau, he, he covered the images of the Lord and his people. And then this man takes the earth and he, he, he puts everything up for sale. Again, you have to go to Esau for the necessity of life. Because the average person doesn't own land, doesn't uh, own agriculture. You know, this is a family called the Cargill family. And um, I typed up products. You know, product, this is from their website, Cargill.com. And this is actually a family of Edomites. These are some of the men right here that own all the agriculture and in in pretty much in the world. You know, all products got to go through them. All right. This is W.W. W. Cargill, founder in 1909. These are his children. This is his family. These are hidden billionaires, man. All right. James Cargill, one-sixth of a family share. Margaret Cargill, one, two, three, all these people, these are Edomites that most people have never heard of, right? And they have commodified all things that are that are in the world, a necessity, especially things in life like agriculture. You use agriculture to what? To grow to grow foods, you know, grains, wheats, corns, animals feed off of it. You see that as animal nutrition, because in order to get good agriculture, you need animals to graze the land as well as for meats that you eat. And these are the services that they hold from uh, beauty products, raw, nat natural raw materials, nature-derived ingredients and innovation services for personal care products, all right, bio-industrial. Okay, they have data asset solutions. This is part of our logistics. And these are things in the ancient world that families would own. You know, you would have land. You're supposed to have land. You're supposed to have cattle. Okay, and having these things will allow you to produce the things that are a necessity to life. You're supposed to have access to fresh, 
clean, good water. And not fresh, clean, good water according to the FDA, Food and Drug Administration. No, things that are uh, considered clean by the, the word of Yahweh Bashiach Shah, they also own what food and beverages, ingredients, resources, and expertise for creating successful food and beverage products, right? Food services. To stay competitive in today's food services industry, you need a partner who understands your business. And these, and that's why you got companies like McDonald's, all well, these fast food products companies, and other, not even just that, Whole Foods, supermarkets, you know, meat and poultry. We provide food producers, retailers, and food services operations with wholesome meat. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Industrial. Salt and, dis it says salt and, DC and solutions, metals and steel trading. And all of this is come all this comes at a high price. Right? I went to another website and it's like everything owned by Nestle. Nestle is known throughout the world as being a purveyor of candy, but their empire expands far beyond confections. The conglomerate also owns brands of bottled water, pet products, healthcare products, and frozen foods. Right. So here it is, water is supposed to be free. You're supposed to be able to, to access good, clean, efficient water for free. That's why the Lord created it. But this man, he's charging you for it, man. Everything that's a necessity, this man has commodified. What does the word commodified mean? The word commodified means commodified. To turn into or treat it as a mere commodity, commercialized. Within the capitalist economic system, commodification is the transformation of things such as goods, services ideas nature these are things that esau didn't create personal information people or animals into objects of trade and commodities even we as human beings are our commodity us as israelites we're a commodity to esau that's where you get the word human resource from okay let's look up the etymology for human resource right human resource Human resource, right? So let me see. They don't have a word for it. Let me go to the definitions. Human resource definition, right? And it says human resource definition or human resources. Human resource, plural noun, human resource. The personal, a the personal of a business or organization, especially personnel of a business organization, especially when regarded. As significant as a significant asset so we as human beings we are a significant asset to these Edomites that own everything all right that's what we are he's commodified everything he's turned everything even nature into something that they could make a profit off of okay and this is wicked this is evil again our kingdom we're not gonna have no packaged products people are gonna have land access to land yes nature nations are gonna have once they get out of captivity, they're going to have um, resources that are uh, useful to the Israelites as well as the whole world, right? But we're not going to commodify things that are supposed to be for free. Even before Esau came to America, uh, Gad, the uh, so-called Native American Indians, they had access to freshwater creeks. They weren't polluting their waters. I think some of their some of their creeks and springs actually had. Um, Precious metals in it, like gold and silver, you know, which help what clean, clean, uh, and um, clean and uh, there's a word for it that gold does to things, but basically clean and allow it to be even more healthier for the body. But what Esau has done, he's he buys up, he buys up acres and acres, hectare acres of land, right, hundreds and hundreds of millions of acres of land, and it's just sit there. It's supposed to be useful for the people, but what but we're pushed into these corners called cities, and you have to go to these different convenience stores to get things that are supposed to be conveniently at your home. You know, when America was being built up, you know, you had farm, farmland, agricultural land, especially in the South, the Midwest, okay, where they grew products. Now, you had us in captivity and slavery, but you also had small families that had their own family farms you know people didn't go to the store to buy eggs people didn't go to the store to go buy bacons 
because they had those things available on their farm with pigs and, and chickens and, and cows. But now the vast majority of the people in the world, they don't know anything about agriculture. We went from an agrarian society to a what industrial society. So when you wait, you allow, you allow industries to provide the things that are necessary to life. But again, this goes back to the curses, Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord, Yahweh Shai, shall sin against thee in hunger, in thirst, and in nakedness, and the want of all things. He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he had destroyed thee. Yep, that's that captivity. And, they, and when we got out of slavery, we didn't get no, you know, they had that promise of the 40 acres and a mule. We didn't get that. And 40 acres could have helped the family. What well, kids learn how to plant, grow, harvest, take care of animals. Forty and forty acres is a lot of land for a human being, for one man, or a small family. And the NLT it says, "You will serve your enemies, whom Yahweh Bashan Shai will sin against you. You will be left hungry, thirsty, naked, and lacking in everything." And this is the reason why we gotta go to these devils for the one of everything. Something simple as water oil okay it says uh, uh you shall be uh, you will be hungry thirsty naked and lacking in everything the lord will put an iron yoke on your neck oppressing you harshly until he has destroyed you and that's where you get uh yokes of iron that we were under that were on our necks physically and that's what the lord did he used these nations to to do this to us you type in yoke of iron or yokes of iron and images right and the first pictures that come up is jake and, and slavery man is jake in captivity and this is this is part of the judgment system the fact that we got to go to the heathen for the want of all things to our enemies because esau is our enemy he's not our friend he, he doesn't have benevolence in his heart for us that's why he like like you got gerber similac all of these things that Shit that's supposed to be natural from a woman's breast. Things that are supposed to be natural from a woman's breast, which is baby milk. You know, creating baby foods at home. You wouldn't have a a a a, a, um, a baby food industry because the Lord give give us what we need from birth through our mothers, our fathers, and our mothers. So that breast milk is enough to sustain a child so that child is able to what eat uh soft foods and solid foods you see but now you got to go to this devil for that uh pureed foods gerber foods you got crushed up bananas and carrots and peas and all this other stuff right but you can do that at home yourself you don't have to go to esau to do it but in a society that's what you do you know you got uh what they got in uh aleph amino Nestle Little Steps, these are these are foods for babies. Uh Biogia, Bobo Fruit, Excella Gold, uh Lacto Lacto Kid, you know. Most kids are lactose intolerant because they shouldn't be drinking that uh uh made up milks, man. You got different waters, Pierre water, Poland Springs, with some of the worst waters right here, Deer Park. Yeah, these wars are terrible, man. Arrowheads, Zephyr Hills, Ice Mountain. Here it is. They put all these different slogans and tags on water. The Lord created water. He did that. He created the animals, the foods, the trees. But Esau's commodified. He make you pay for that. Things that are supposed to be free. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter, I'm sorry. Salakis, go ahead. This is not it. It's the book of Ecclesiastes 39 and 26. It says, The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water. You see, this is a principal thing fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat. Remember, the, the Cargill Company, they own that. They own these tracks, large tracks of land, and they own the wheat industry. Right, you see that, but these are things that are principal things that a man needs for his life: is water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, 
milk, hey, just to get the best honey, you got to pay uh, exorbitant amounts of money for something that's free. The Lord created bees on his own. And bees produce what? Honey. They pollinate other flowers. You right? And that's supposed to be free, but we got to go pay for it. We got to pay for that. You know, milk and the blood of the grape, which is wine and oil and clothing. These are the principal things. And in a, in a good new translation, it says, it says there, sorry, it says, um, yeah, in a good new translation, it says, the basic necessities of human life are water. So it's, water is a basic necessity. That's something that you need automatically. You know, it's like G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. You come born with a thirst for water and fire so you can heat things, melt things, cook things, and iron so you can use it to cut things and create pans and stuff to eat your food. Salt, which give help bring flavor to foods. And wheat of flour and milk and honey, the blood of the grape oil and clothing. See, so you got to go, here it is. We got to, we got to pay for clothing. You know, there was a time in America where um, um, clothing products were made by your mother at home or your grandmother. She made your pair of pants. She made your jacket. She make you a suit. These are natural gifts that women are supposed to have. But in this world, they don't. We got to go to stores to purchase items. And then a lot of these clothing items that don't get sold, they just throw it in the trash. Where well, you got people that actually need clothing, right? They throw it away, you know? But these are basic necessities of life. So you're supposed to automatically be given these things. But you can't because what? Esau has commodified necessities of life. That's a good title. Esau has commodified necessities of life. You see? And this is part of the curses. It's Ezekiel 4 and 16. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will break the staff of the bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment, that they may want bread and water and be astonished one with another and consume away for their iniquity. So that's what this is for. This happened in ancient Jerusalem when we were there and we were breaking the Lord's law, and commandments. These are things the Lord provided us for free. We were drinking water without measure. We were eating without care. All right? But then, once we start going off, now we got to get it in measure. Let's go with that word for measure. All right? That word for measure, and in the Hebrew is mashawara. Mashawara. All right? Mashawara for measure. And it says measure um, from unused meaning, apparently to divide for liquids, right? So when you, you get water in ounces, you get it in liters, you get it in gallons. And if you got if you don't have enough money to pay for it, guess what? You can't have it. Or if you only got enough money for a liter of water, that's all you're going to get. And even if you, even at home, you got tap water, which is full with poisons and shit. But guess what? You got to pay something called a water bill. You're paying for water to be um, given to you uh, um, via a, a processing plant that doesn't even take all the shit that it's supposed to take out of it. You have no minerals and water. That's why even to pay for mineral water is expensive. Like, let's see, the most expensive mineral water. Right? The most expensive mineral water. Let's just look at this. Aqua de Cristi Cristallo is $107,000, $107,200. The bottle is a 24 karat solid gold, which gold, what does gold, uh, um, right? I typed in, what does gold do for water? It says it strengthens the nervous system, improves memory and intelligence, and increase stamina, and antiseptics. That's what this, that's what these minerals do, especially in water. Gold water, silver water, copper water. Um, something recommends gold water, silver water, and copper water to treat various conditions. This is there is no evidence that they work or even that they contain gold or silver or copper. So these so-called gold waters from Kangan Kangan water, the oxygenated water, there are enough 
pseudoscientific and quacky waters offering to fill an entire website devoted to water-related pseudoscience and fantasy poetry. That resources covers ionized or alkaline, alkaline, alkaline uh, alkalinized water, alkaline water, oxygenated waters, energized water, structured water, magnetized waters. Yeah. What's going on? It says, well worth its visit in crack pottery. It says, the alleged health benefits. It doesn't seem to mention gold water or silver water or copper water. These are far from new, but I just recently became aware of them. It seems that they are an old Ayurvedic thing. I didn't know that Ayurvedic Verdia was when I graduated from medical school. If I had gone to naturopathic school, I would have known. It says they also teach homopathy, which Esau teaches against that. I'm glad I chose medical school. I'm convinced reality is the best medicine. Gold is not only beautiful, but it has divine properties that can assist in maintaining balance of health. It also heating, also heating, and so should it is. It is also heating, so should be used caution and condition to excess and heat. The health benefits of gold water. So I'm not sure what gold water is, but it tells you about this. Is it supposed? It's supposed to help with all of this, right? You have copper water. There is no scientific evidence to support the health claims for gold water. Well, they tell you that. Anyway, this is uh again the most expensive mineral water, right? Is uh aqua de cristallo. The bottle is a twenty-four karat solid gold. Each aqua de cristallo bottle contains water that comes from glaciers. Again, Esau didn't create these glaciers, but he's charging you to drink glacier water, and the islands and water springs in Fiji, so they say, and in France. The most expensive water bottles in the world. You know, they're charging you uh, all this money for a water bottle. Right? I don't know what's going on with this website. This website is terrible. Right? What is the most expensive bottled water? $1,390 per liter. What is the most expensive bottle? Again, they're charging you for water. Here it is, this devil didn't even create water, but he's charging for it. Philco Jewelry Water from Japan. Uh, Nevis from Germany, uh, $1,100. Bling H2O, right? From uh, 219 per liter. You see this shit? For water. Uh, uh, Boulevard from Tasmania, Australia, $27 per liter for some water, right? This is supposed to be water. Water is a human right and a delight. It is a human right. It's a human necessity. But again, this man has taken that necessity and now he charges you for it. Um, this is a book, Isaiah 34, 8. For it is, for it is the day of the Lord. It's a lot here. Uh, and this is why the Lord is going to destroy this place. Yep. It says, uh, this is Isaiah 34, 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood and is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs, goats, with the fat of kidneys and rams. For the Lord have a sacrifice in Basra, Esau, Edom, this land of America, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea, which is America. And the unicorn shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of his recompense for the controversy of Zion. And the NLT it says, For it is the day of the Lord's revenge, the year when Edom will be paid back for all it did to Israel. Right, because you're going to have to pay for this. Here it is, you charge us for poison. So the scripture says we shall eat what poison and live. Here it is, you charge us for poison. You put, put us in hell of captivity and oppression. You know, this, this destroying Jake. Well, the Lord's going to pay you back for that. Okay, you Edomites are going to get paid back for that, starting with the super elite. Right? And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall be a burning, shall become burning pitch. And that's what America's going to be. The streams of Edom will be filled with burning pitch, and the ground will be carved with fire. And it happened in ancient Edom. You know? 
Okay, you got the Cargill family going back to these devils. This is the Cargill family, also known as the Cargill McMallon family, refers to a multi generational descendants of American business executives. You know, Wallace, uh, William Wallace Cargill, uh, John H. McMillan Sr., the Cargill family is the fourth wealthiest family in America. Descendants of Cargill and McMallon have owned common equity in agribusiness. Agribusiness is the industry enterprise in the field of study of value chains in art agriculture and bioeconomy, in which case is also called bio business, which is basically <laughs> body business. Body business or bio enterprise, the primary goal of agribusiness is to maximize profit while satisfying the needs of consumers for products related to for products for products uh related to natural resources. So here it is. Esau he goes around the world, steals these natural resources, and then he charges you a premium for it, such as biotechnology, farms, food, forestry, fishers, fuel, and fiber. You see? And all that is is about maximizing profits. You see? This man's a devil. This man's a fucking devil, man. You know? And these, this is that family right here. These devils. These are some of them right here. You know? The Mac, Mac, Cargill Macmillan family. And they're all Edomites. That's why, again, the, the, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. These are all Edomites, man. All Edomite devils. Right? And all they care about is themselves. All they care about is their pockets. All they care about is destroying our people. Okay? So I, I ain't gonna make this too long. I just wanted to bring this out. You know, definitely Esau has uh, commodified necessities of life. And this is an example of that. So I hope you were edified with us. And Shalom. On to the next.